Truly, we bless the Lord this morning. We are appreciative of what God is doing and what God is uh, up to. We thank the Lord because God has been good. There's no doubt in my mind that God has been better to us than we've been to ourselves. I pray continually for our nation. America, God is waking you up. America, God is trying to get your attention. So we ask that God would have his way and that hearts would be humbled, heads would be bowed, and that men, women, boys, and girls of all creeds, all colors, all cities and towns would humble themselves before you and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Yes. So I'm grateful and thankful I come against this virus that continues to plague our nation, and it is a plague. I come against it and curse it at its root in the name of Jesus, because we have the power and the authority as believers to call those things that are not as though they are. So Lord, I ask you to come against the virus. We pray for the health of our friends and, and families who have dealt with the virus and who have overcome, and then, then there are those that are yet in the midst of it. And we pray for their total recovery in the name of Jesus. We pray for the wealth of this nation and the health of this nation. We pray for all those that are on unemployment. We pray, God, and, and struggling with maintaining and, and having us, uh, uh, the, their needs being met. We ask, Lord, that you would intervene on their behalf. God is able to do it. So we're asking God to do what he has promised. We pray again for justice and mercy. And that those that have been treated unfairly and, and just not done right, we ask God that you would hold up a standard because you've declared your word that the nation that forgets God and the nation that goes contrary, that that nation will have to answer to you. So we pray, God, that as we lift up righteousness, lives will be changed and, and the, the spirit of God would mandate before us, even, even from... The, the, the top house in our country to our house in our home that would mandate truth and mandate right and mandate good things on behalf of your word in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you already. This morning I'd like to speak with you and I thank the Lord for his word. If you have your Bibles handy, I'm going to ask you to turn to um, James, the letter of James, James, the first chapter beginning at the 23rd through the 25th verse. James 1, 23 to 25 says this, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man holding, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If I might use for a word this morning to encourage you, my desire is to encourage you, to build you up, and to keep you encouraged that God is able to do what he has promised. If I might use for a word, it would be perfecting images. Yes. Perfecting images. Jesus had a way, he had a way of leaving a lasting impression on those who would dare to believe him. The multitudes followed his word. Matthew 7 and 28 says this, and it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. Jesus made a lasting, eternal impression on those that not only heard him, but those that also knew him. The message was simple. He said, listen, I am the light of the world. If you choose to follow me, he said, you will no longer be in darkness. The message is simple. He said, if you follow me, he said, you will no longer be in darkness. St. John 8, 12 says this, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Yes. He that followed me mm -hmm. shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus said, if you just follow my words, yes. you've seen my pattern. Uh -huh. If you would just 
follow my words and trust me, you will have the light of life. His message was simple. His, his representation of what he said impacted them because he lived by example. Oh God, give us examples today. Mm -hmm. Give us them that say what they mean and mean what they say. Give us examples today, Lord. Give us examples. The transforming power that we know of the Spirit of God is sufficient. It's able, it's sufficient uh, to make me a new creature in the image of our Lord. God says, listen, I'm going to transform your life. And the image that will be personified will no longer be you, but it will be me. In other words, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he's able to change you and allow what you radiate to be a persona, a, 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 listen, an image of him. He's able to change you. That's why the scripture is so powerful and mighty in 2 uh, Corinthians 5 and 17. But the scripture before that gives clarity to the fact that we trust God to be by faith. And the image that we receive by faith is of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 16. It says this. He says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. He says, Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. He says, Yet now henceforth know we him no more. The Apostle Paul said, Listen, though we have seen Christ in the flesh, he said, If we are to see him anymore, if his image, if his person is to be representative in our life anymore, it's going to be by faith. That's why the just shall not live by sight. The just shall live, glory to God, by faith. And thank God for the faith of God's word that allows us to be transformed as we put our trust in him. Going on a little further in that text, it says this in the 17th there. Therefore, the conclusion is made, since we no longer see Christ in the flesh, uh, and even though we remember him in the flesh, we now have to receive him by, by faith, and that the image we have is that which he deposits in us by faith. He said, therefore now, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. He says, listen, behold, all things are made or become new. So therefore, even though he was with us, he's still with us. But his impression upon me is made by the unction and the power and the move of the Holy Ghost. The image of Christ reflects his glory. It reflects his glory. What I think about him and what God, uh, what I see him as, it reflects his glory. After the resurrection, we saw him no more, but I know him because he lives in me. Yes. Oh, God, I thank you for your impact on my life that I might believe in him with whom I don't see, but I know that he has impacted my life because his image is ever in my spirit and the spirit of God continues to refresh me in the knowledge of who Jesus is. God, I thank you for your word. Look at our text here. Oh God, I thank you for your word. Look at our text here. For if any man, if any be a hearer, the 23rd verse of James 1, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. The letter, or the book of James, is written by James, but the letter itself is, is so straightforward. James himself, the apostle, was somewhat of a person, uh, when you study him a little bit, a few words. Uh, he was to the point, he was straightforward and without excuse. Mm -hmm. James' letter is so clear that a natural mind can see 
the, 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 the clarity in what he says, and it is not complex. James was to the point. He was, if you will, today, we call him a straight shooter. He didn't uh, 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 come up with a lot of parables. He didn't come with a lot of things that you necessarily have to spiritually discern. James is almost like Proverbs in the Old Testament. Amen. Because James was to the point, straight, straightforward, and every uh, uh, word he spoke uh, almost uh, brought about its own conclusion. You had to sit back and say, well, I, I know exactly what he means. I, I may not believe it, I may not understand it, but I know what he says. And I know what he's saying. Amen, amen, amen. It doesn't, it's no wonder that James was the first apostle to be martyred. He was the son of Zebedee. John was his brother. But he was the first one to be martyred. And it doesn't surprise me because probably when he asked James something concerning the resurrection and the person of Jesus Christ, he was probably to the point and said to them outright, you must be born again. Except you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not going to know God. And I'm pretty sure his ministry to the Jews, it was hard because it was hard to hear. And the bottom line says, he was martyred. He was killed for the message of the gospel. Jesus told James and John, or should I say, told the mother of James and John, when she came to Jesus, said, let my son sit on the left and the right in your kingdom. And the Lord basically said to him, I don't have that authority or the power to do it. He said, but are they ready to drink of the cup? I drink up. And are they ready to be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? And here he was martyred. So he did drink of the cup, and he was baptized with the same baptism into Jesus Christ. Don't tell me God don't fulfill his word. Don't tell me God don't do what he has promised. You can see the martyrdom of, of, of uh, James in Acts 12 and 2. He said, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. All the Caesars and all the emperors who were on a tirade to kill believers, and especially the disciples, went after them with vengeance. But God allowed him mm, to be a prophecy, if you will, to be a fulfilling prophecy concerning his word. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't surprise me that James' word is so direct and without excuse. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. That's where you are to be with people sometimes. Stop beating around the bush and tell them, except you believe in Jesus Christ, oh, who is the Savior of the world, who lived and laid his life down that we might live, you can't live apart from that. You must be born again. You must come into a right relationship with Jesus Christ in order to see God. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. James, in his letter, speaks almost the substance of the entire letter in some of the first seven, in the seven verses of his letter, the, if you will, the beginning of his letter, and some of the portion there, he kind of tells the entire uh, uh, thought process throughout the letter. He says in James 1 and 5, if any of you lack wisdom, he said, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Then he says, but let, us, let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man mm, think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The interesting part, that is to the point, without controversy, and without excuse. In other words, James is saying here, he said, if you need wisdom, mm -hmm. ask God in faith believing. Mm -hmm. And don't doubt or waver. He said, but believe, because God must be believed in order to be trusted. He has to be believed. And he says, listen, let me warn you now. I want to warn you, not only believing is necessary, but I warn you, he said, listen, don't be double-minded, because if you're double-minded in, in your effectiveness toward believing God, he, he said, you're unstable in all your <coughs> excuse me, you're unstable in all your ways. But James was to the point, straightforward and without excuse. What a mighty God we serve. So here we are back at our text. I'm going to read it again. 
Back at our text. Bless the Lord. James 1, 23 and 24. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. James compares hearing God's word and not doing it to a man looking at himself in a glass or a mirror. Uh -huh. And immediately forgetting what he looks like. As I was reading this, I thought about, this verse is interesting because I can believe that you can forget what somebody else looks like. But I have trouble believing but it's true that you can forget what you look like when you see your own reflection. That has to be a thing that you choose to do. That has to be a thing that you've already settled upon yourself that I'm not going to acknowledge what I look like in the mirror. It's almost like driving down the street and looking in the rearview mirror while you drive and acting like there's no activity behind you. Many people today understand keep their eyes in the rearview mirror and are unable to go forward because they keep looking backwards. So this lets me to know if you continue to look at your past, you'll never see your future. But if you look forward and then you occasionally look in the rearview mirror to see how far you've come, then you can progress further and see yourself clearly in the mirror. Amen. So, James says, listen, in order for a person to hear God's word and not do it, he said it's like looking in the mirror and forgetting what you saw in the mirror, and the image was about you. Oh, God, I thank you. You got to look at yourself and see yourself in the light of God's word. You got to see yourself as God sees you. Because if you see yourself as God sees you, according to his word, then you're able to understand not only the complexities of you, but you're able to understand the process by which God is dealing with you. One of the scriptures that always encouraged me in the scripture says, examine yourself. See if you're being the faith. That self-examination is good. Because it allows us to critique ourselves so that we don't walk around blinded with, with, with false accusations or false our feelings and sensitivity about ourselves. Amen. You can look at yourself in the mirror for a long time and say that's not you. But you will never be impacted or benefited by what you see except you believe the image that you see. Oh, God, I thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus impacted everybody who saw him, not to mention those that knew him. On one occasion, Jesus fell asleep on a ship in the midst of a storm, woke up, rebuked the storm, and the image that was left in the minds of the disciples was not as much as the storm being calm, was not as much as the hurricane or the winds being shifted that they were involved of. Listen, this is the image that stayed in their mind. They said this in Matthew 8, 27, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the seas obey him? Yes. This man is the God-man, Christ Jesus. Perfecting images in what that matter most. Perfecting images that matter most. You, you couldn't believe that he did it, but you had to realize that it was him doing it in order to get the benefit or the impact of the process. They step back and say, listen, what manner of 
useless. Now our scripture even declares that you can walk away from a mirror that shows your, your uh, listen, you are a reflection and forget what manner of person you are. But the disciples, when they said, listen, he calmed the sea. He stopped the wind. This must be God. No question. No controversy. This must be God. Looking in the mirror should translate to us into an honest reflection of who I am. Should be an honest reflection of who I am. Self-image is invaluable. Seeing myself as I really am is invaluable. Therefore, I'm not distorted in my impression of who I am. And I can't allow anybody else to distort my image of who I am. Many people are positive. A lot of people are negative. That's why I tell you to get away from those that would, would bring you down and make you less than who you are. Jesus said, and listen, he said, love thy neighbor mm -hmm. as you love Yourself. Self love is important. You need to love your neighbor with the same diligence to which you think of yourself and lovingly appreciate yourself. So, self perception is necessary so that I might walk in honesty and I might walk in truth. The Bible says in Proverbs 33. 23 and 7, the first portion, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, he says, So is he. Self percep uh, perception is necessary because it determines our self image so that we can love, glory to God, ourselves. Amen. So that I'm not distorted in what I see. Amen. Oh, Thank you. Perfecting images that matter most. Oh, God. I got to see it right in order to walk in it right. I got to see it right in order to believe that it's right. Philippians 4 and 8 says this. Finally, brethren, he says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue or moral excellence, that's what virtue means, and if there be any praise, think on these things. The Apostle Paul is giving the church at Philippi a mindset so that their self-perception of themselves can be invaluable. He said, listen, whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is honest, he said, think on these things. Because mm -hmm. as a man thinketh, glory to God, yes. so is he. If you think you're nobody, you you'll act like you're nobody. Mm -hmm. But if you think you're somebody, in our case, we think we're somebody mm -hmm. because of our relationship to God, because we see him mm -hmm. as not only God, but the God man. And we know that Christ is more than able, so we see ourselves in the light of his word. So therefore, when I see myself, I know I'm blessed. When I see myself, I know I'm on God's side. In spite of what's going on in this world, I know what the scripture says. God has my back. I see myself blessed. So even in spite of the virus, uh, even in spite of unemployment, uh, even in spite of lost lives, uh, I know I'm blessed because I see myself blessed in him. And I know according to Psalms 91 and 1, he that dwelleth in that's me in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I know God has my back. So when I see myself in the light of God's word, I know God is keeping me according to his word. Perfecting images. Yeah. Perfecting images that matter most. Amen. 
my self-perception is invaluable when I put my trust in him. You cannot and should not deny who you are. If you know where you are and you know who you are, don't deny that. But be willing to accept what you are through discipline and honesty. Yes. Understand this. If you see there ought to be some changes, accept it. Don't walk in self-denial. Amen. But walk in self-appreciation of who you are and be willing to deny those things that make you less than who you are. Glory to God. Perfecting images that matter most. How do you see yourself? That's why a lot of times in interviews they will ask you a question. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? But if you have no self-perception and you're walking in self-denial and unwilling to discipline yourself with honesty, then you will never have anything invested in your future. Glory to God. But when you see yourself blessed, and when you see yourself out, even though you're still in, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God will bring you out. He will bring you out. Because this is a journey. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Life, though, may be short. It's still a process that we have to go through by the transforming power of Almighty God. I'm better than I was yesterday. Why? Because God transforms me every day, every minute, every moment as I put my trust in him. Oh God, I thank you. Look what he, 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 when he spoke about our denial to him and to follow him, it's a process. He said, listen, in St. Matthew 16 and 24, then Jesus said unto them, if any man come unto me, he said, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It was not only a case of self-denial, but it was a case of honesty and discipline that they had to, uh, listen, engage in in order to follow Jesus Christ. They had to, listen, You just because you got saved, God is not asking you not to be disciplined. That's why, according to him, he not only saves you and delivers you from yourself, he asks you to call him Lord. Yes. And if he's Lord and Savior, then God says, listen, I want you to walk in honesty and discipline in the self-denial of yourself so that I, Christ Jesus, can be the life in you and you can be benefited. So he said, if any man come unto me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Then he says this in the 25th verse. He says, for whosoever, glory, that means anybody and everybody, for whosoever shall, lose, shall save his life shall lose it. If you seek to save that which you're in denial of, you're going to lose it. But if you're honest with yourself, you're going to save it. Oh, God, I thank you. Be true. To yourself. Yes. Everybody has issues. Wave your hand if you know what I mean. But don't sit back and talk as if you never had an issue. Uh -huh. Or not dealing with an issue. So Jesus says, listen, even in spite of your issues, he said, deny yourself and follow me. So that I can allow you to be disciplined and to be honest with the picture that you see in the mirror. And he said, listen. The picture that you see as you put your trust in me, well, he said, is being transformed, changed every day. Oh, God, I thank you. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life, mm, for my sake, shall find it. Oh, God, I thank you. <laughs> Listen, replacing those things that are weights rather than stepping stones in your life are perfectly in are perfect images that matter most. In other words, laying aside the stuff yes. that causes you to be hindered and to be changed and transformed is a good thing. He said, Look, if you're going to follow me, lay down some stuff. He said, Lay aside every weight in Hebrews 12 and 1. He said, Lay aside every weight that, that so easily beset us and run with pain the race that is set before us. Our process and our responsibility is to
to come to him, amen, with surrendered hearts and surrendered spirits so that he can make us what he would have us to be. So he said, be willing to discipline yourself and be honest with yourself and walk in humility with faith believing. Oh God, I thank you for your word. Impacting, impacting yourself is essential to fulfill yourself. Oh God, there can be no change if you don't allow it. Mm -hmm. God can't make it happen. There can be no change if you don't allow it. Oh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, I want to change, I want to change. You have to allow it to happen yes, sir. in order for change to be a reality. You've got to allow it to happen. Self pity, I mean, uh, uh, self perception, mm -hmm. self denial, mm -hmm. and now a self fulfilling prophecy on you as you. Perfect images in your life that matter most. Yes. Fix your eyes on him that is eternal. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto him. You know, you, you got to fix your eyes on the prize. You got to fix your eyes on the finish line. You got to see yourself as more than a conqueror. You got to see yourself as a winner and not a loser. Yeah. So you have to discipline yourself with honesty and integrity so that God can be exalted in your life. Oh God, I thank you. Self fulfilling. Oh God, I thank you. You got to, as according to 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, you got to see through a glass darkly, mm -hmm. but then face to face, and then you will know even as you are known. As we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, he's able to give us the, the images in our spirit that matter so that we can be reminded of his person. We can be reminded of his work. We can be reminded of his function in our life and it fulfills the prophecy he has already spoken over your life. Don't you know you're a self-fulfilling prophecy? Yes. Don't you know God already has a plan and a destiny and a purpose for your life? Yes. So God says, listen, continue to trust me. Continue to look to me. Continue to discipline yourself. Continue to see yourself in the mirror as I see you. Perfecting images in your life, in your situation that matter. Oh, it's not about thinking positive. It's about thinking about him. So when we think positive, my positivity is directed at him. Yes. Oh, God, I thank you. We, you look at yourself. You are a self-fulfilling prophecy. And God is determined if you put your trust in him. Oh, God, I thank you to make it and make you a reality. Yes, yes, yes. Look what the writer says here in Philippians 3 and 13. Paul says, listen, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, listen, I haven't arrived yet, but this one thing I do. He said, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He said, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I know what's in the rearview mirror, but I'm not stuck on the rearview mirror. I know what's behind me. It's not going to keep me from going forward. He said, don't allow your past oh, to afford your future. He said, I keep my eyes so, so that I forget those things that are behind me. And I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. Last verse in our text, James 1.25. He says, listen, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, perfecting images, God, I thank you, that matter most. 
He said the law of liberty and continuum therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. He said, if you don't forget it, he said you're going to be blessed. Uh-huh. If you continue to walk in the purpose and the integrity of God's word, he said you're going to be blessed. He said this man's life is going to be perfect. In other words, it's going to be complete in him because of the process. Uh -huh. Then he says in the 48th verse, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I, we are flawed, but God sees us as perfect. Uh -huh. We are handicapped. Uh, we are less than what we should be if you look at us in the mirror. But God says, I see you're perfect. Uh, and if you continue to see yourself as an image uh, and the reflection of how I see you, he said, I'm doing a perfect work. He said, be you perfect as I am perfect. Uh, allow yourself to walk in the integrity of the reflection that God gives as opposed to forgetting what you look like. Uh, remember how God sees you and you'll see yourself in your future and not be driven by your past. Perfecting images. Woo! God, that man most. Uh, keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, keep your eyes on the blessing. Uh, keep your eyes and listen, it's, listen, listen. God has all power. God has all authority. The Bible says, listen, I've heard it once, it's been said twice, that power belongeth unto God. I don't care what goes on in America. I don't care what goes on in our system. I don't care how, how wicked it looks. I don't care what's going on. You may have to be farsighted. You may have to be nearsighted. You may have to be narrow-minded. But I'm going to look unto him with whom I believe. And look unto him uh, with open face, uh, beholding him as in a glass. Uh, I'm going to know even as I know, because God's word don't fail. Because God is perfecting images that matter most. God is about changing my thought process. Uh, God is about changing how I see things. Uh, when I look unto him, the author and the finisher of my faith. I am more compelled. I am more excited. I am more determined to believe God. Oh God, I thank you for your word. Help us, God, all to walk in the provision to which you have established so I can perceive myself as you see me. That I can deny myself as you see me. That I can fulfill the promise that you have spoken over my life as you see me and know that come hell or high water come down or demon God is still faithful to perform what he has started Paul told Timothy said listen Timothy you're a young pastor everybody is in your face. You have to deal with accusations, some true and some false. You have to deal with making decisions that you might feel you're too immature to make. And you should be more mature. But Paul had to encourage him and say, listen, you come from good stock, Timothy. Your mother, Eunice, and your grandmother, Lois, believe God. Mm -hmm. So he said, you come from a faithful house. So don't be discouraged, Timothy. You may be young, but you're full of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Timothy, listen. He that hath begun yeah. a good work in you, I don't care how you see it. shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Woo! God finishes what he started. God is able to perform his work and if we trust him, God will perfect his image in 
us so that we don't lag or lag behind. We will be encouraged when other ones are discouraged. We will be faithful when other ones are not faithful. Because what God starts, oh God, I thank you. He finishes. Yeah. He finishes. Perfecting images and manner most. James 1.24 For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. We don't have to forget. We can always remember when we put our trust in Jesus Christ. Perfecting images that matter most. Father God, all that are under the sound of my voice, all that may be struggling with self-image, mm, help them to see themselves in the light of your word. Help them to come to the truth and you are the truth. You declare in your word in St. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let all that would hear and all that would believe yes. say, Lord, have mercy yes. on my soul today. Yes. I want to see you, Lord, in the light of your word. Yes. I want to see myself, God, as you see me so that I can be a self-fulfilling prophecy yes, Thank you, Jesus. as you motivate, transform, and bless my life. All of them that don't know you right now in the part of their sin and are encouraged by this word, mm -hmm. according to St. John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let him know, Lord, right now that if they say, Lord, have mercy, forgive me of my sin, that they can be transformed and begin to see you in the light of your word. It is easy and simple as saying, Lord, come into my life. Yes. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, thank you, Lord, for your word. Yes. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, you confess what you believe. Romans 10, 17. So then faith, God, I thank you cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you see yourself in the mirror today, and you're not seeing yourself as a self-fulfilling prophecy, you need to give your heart to Jesus Christ, yes. and he will make you his own. Truly, we bless the Lord. Father, we thank you. Come against sickness, infirmity, health to the body of Christ, and health to the body of people that hear this word. May they be encouraged, may they be blessed, may they be strengthened, may they be drawn in the midnight hour or in the early part of the day to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God, we believe it, we speak it, and we say it so in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank everybody. We thank everybody for their attention. We thank everybody for their time. If you would like to bless this ministry, and we are a ministry, we thank you for new beginnings. We thank you for your support, not only to watch us, but to encourage us and pray for us. If you would like to make an offering, that's not a requirement, but we ask and we put it out there. But if you would like to bless the work of God, and you're always blessed by blessing the work of God, you can send offerings to NBCC, Post Office Box, Shell Company, PA, 18914. If you'd like to mail in a prayer request, we haven't gotten any prayer requests. But if you would like to uh, mail in a prayer request, we will read them on air and pray for them. Amen. We will call your name out before the Lord and trust God for his results. 
If, you, if your offering may come by way of Cash App, you can Cash App us at NBCCPSatch. Amen. And we thank you for your word. We can also be seen if you pull up Facebook as well as YouTube. NBCC or basically Paul Satch. And you can put that in there and it will come up. But we thank you for your time. We thank you for your uh, blessing to this word. Because you listening to it all is a blessing. And we thank you for it. But understand this. Understand this. Perfecting images that matter most implies that you are when you put your trust in Jesus Christ. A self-fulfilling prophecy that God alone will bring the pass. Father, we thank you all under the sound of my voice. God, have your way and bless us that we might come again on next week. But God, we thank you already. All of the prayer requests, all of the unspoken prayer requests, we just speak over right now in the name of Jesus and declare them to be, the, to be heard and declare them to not only come out of the mouth, but come out of the heart. Yes. And that God, you will hear our cry. And we appreciate you, Lord. Forgive us of our sins and continue to search us and bless us. For Christ's sake, amen and amen.